I don't mind your house I'm biology and medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook at Mondo Surigan. Please like, and here you can also ask questions, answer questions, and post some interesting things, including your artworks. And you can also change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics. In this video, we're going to talk about the physio physiology of kidneys to an extent. So just recapping, remember we have two kidneys, the right kidney and the left kidney. Um, and we have the ureter, which then deposits the urine or the waste into the urinary bladder, which then gets excreted. Um, the kidneys have many functions. Let's look at some of them. For, for first, they regulate um, extracellular fluid volume and blood pressure. And they also regulate osmolarity, the maintenance of ion balance. They have a role in homeostatic regulation of pH, excretion of waste, very important, production of hormones, such as renin, and also they perform gluconeogenesis in times of starvation and these are just some of the things the kidneys do the kidneys so they're made up of they're made up of kidney cells many types of cells but what's important in kidneys are the functional units which are the nephrons and these aren't cells these are functional units cells make up the functional unit which is the nephron so here we have one nephron, one functional unit of the, of the kidney. Let's look at its anatomy. The head of the nephron, this space around here, is known as a Bowman's capsule. After substances has been filtered through this area, it will enter the proximal convoluted tubules into the loop of Henle, this loop here, which has two parts, the descending limb and the ascending limb. The ascending limb actually has a thin part and a thick part, and the thick part comes close back to the head of the nephron as you can see and then it and then it connects to the distal convoluted tubules which then connects onto the collecting duct and all these nephrons will connect essentially to the collecting duct where it will um, add up to produce the waste the urine that we will that we will pass onto the bladder and then it will go out as pee i hope that makes complete sense so now let's look at this area around this Bowman's capsule and this glomer glo glomerulus area, if you remember from the overall video on and the nephrology. Actually, if you haven't watched the nephro nephrology overview video, I probably suggest you watch that. So here we have the Bowman's capsule, this space in the head of the nephron, and here we have the proximal convoluted tubules, the beginning. Notice how there are different types of cells. We have the squamous cells in the Bowman's capsule area, and then we have the cuboidal cells in the proximal tubules. Here we have the blood vessel entering this Bowman's capsule. First of all, the afferent arterial enters the Bowman's capsule where it will then become what's called a glomerulus, which will then wrap around this Bowman's capsule area and then will exit out of this head through the efferent arterial. The blood vessel brings in many types of substances, ions, red blood cells, plasma, etc. Remember the ascending limb of the loop of Henle, the thick ascending limb, how it goes back towards the head of the nephron? Well, it does this because um, cells within the thick ascending limb of the loop of Henle, they, they, they contain cells which are important in maintaining ionic balance, such as sodium and chloride. So. Here we have the thick ascending loop of Henle, which came from the loop of Henle, and the thick ascending loop of Henle will connect on later to the distal tubule. Hope this makes sense, essentially. So let's look at some cells and look, look at, let's look at some more anatomy. Within the glomerulus, we have special cells which basically wrap around these capillaries. And these are known as podocytes, and they have many feet like projections, and they're important in filtration of substances from the capillaries into the nephron itself. And then we have these other cells known, known as mesangial cells. Um, and they're important in contraction and altering blood flow and connecting basically everything together. Uh, wrapping around, you can say, the uh, blood vessels, the blood, the blood capillaries, such as the afferent arterial and the efferent arterial, we have what's called granular cells. And these cells are mechanoreceptors, and they also secrete a hormone known as renin. Renin is important later on um, in a big system known as the renin and angiotestine aldosterone system, which helps maintain blood pressure. Now, we also have mesenglial cells um, out of the Bowman's capsules. 
and mesenglial cells, they have lots of actin, which are proteins. They have lots of actin, which are important for contraction, and so it helps alter blood flow and blood pressure. Now, remember how I mentioned that the ascending, the thick ascending loop of Henle are important because they contain cells which are important in maintaining um, ion, ion gradient or substances? Well, these cells are very close by to the, the head of the Bowman's capsule itself, here in blue. These cells are known as macula densa cells, and they are like chemoreceptors, which monitor sodium and chloride content going into the distal convoluted tubules. So if there's too much or too little, um, it will alter the absorption, reabsorption, secretion of these ions. It might all sound very confusing now, but I hope later on it will shed, this video will shed some light into this confusion. So this section here, the Bowman's capsule and the glomerulus, is known as a renal corpuscle. They make up the renal corpuscle. And then in the outside, essentially, we have the juxtaglomerular complex, which comprises of the granular cells, the mesenchymal cells, and the macula densa cells. Now, another important thing to know is that nephrons, kidneys itself, have a very, very rich blood supply in order to perform all its tasks, such as regulating volume, blood pressure, ions, osmolarity, and pH, just to name some. But as the kidneys will still be monitoring and regulating pH, osmolarity, and blood pressure, the end product of the kidneys itself, the nephrons, will be urine, waste. So now let's look at the kidney physiology and how urine is produced and how it monitors everything at the same time. So here we have uh, a nephron from the Bowman's capsule to the end. And here we have the blood vessel coming in, the afferent arterial coming into the Bowman's capsule, and the efferent arterial leaving out. Now let's look at the three major renal processes. The first of the three major renal processes is glomerular filtration, where substances from the glomerulus gets filtered into the nephron. No cells or big proteins really enter. However, everything usually gets dumped from the glomerulus into the nephron. Following filtration, we have tubular reabsorption, where substances that were previously filtered get reabsorbed back into the blood. The body selectively moves substances from the filtrate, from the nephron, back into the blood. And nearly everything is reabsorbed back into the blood. The glucose, the amino acids, and the water that were just filtered. So only a small amount of substances is actually left in the nephron itself. Following reabsorption, we have number three, tub tubular secretion. And this is when the body, again, selectively adds or adds, moves substances from the blood into the nephron, into the filtrate, so the opposite of reabsorption. It actually, the body just um, dumps substances from the blood into the nephron, which it doesn't need. And so whatever is left in the nephron from the filtration, reabsorption, and secretion, we have what we can call the fourth process, which is excretion, which is the urine leaving out. So let's look at this in a better uh, diagram. Let's look at the urine production. Here we have the depiction of one nephron from the head, from the Bowman's capsule to the end. And here we have the blood supply coming in. We have the afferent arterial, which then enters the Bowman's capsule, which makes up the glomerulus. The glomerulus then leaves the Bowman's capsule as an afferent arterial. And this is our blood supply. So the three major renal processes. We have one, the glomerular filtration. Filtration, basically filtration of substances from the glomerulus into the nephron, into the tubule. Two, tubular reabsorption. Reabsorption is the reabsorption of the filtrate from the tubule back into the blood, what the body needs. And then we have three, tubular secretion. Secretion, where the body secretes substances from the blood back into the nephron, back into the tubule, to be excreted for as urine. So what amount of substances is actually excreted out of the body? To find this, let's find out the amount of solute excreted, the amount of substances excreted. To calculate this, first of all, we just have to find out the amount filtered, the amount actually filtered, minus the amount reabsorbed by the body, 
and then we have to add the amount secreted by the body. And this will give us the amount of solute excreted, solute in P. I hope you learned something from this video. In the next videos to come, we'll look at the three major renal processes, beginning with glomerular filtration, and then reabsorption, and then secretion. I'll also provide links on this video on one of the functions of the kidneys, which is regulating fluid volume and blood press pressure by providing a link on the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. Thank you.